Join me, will you, on this magical journey of replacing an AC compressor and accumulator dryer on this vehicle. 04 Failblazer Extended Rear AC. Okay, so we're getting ready to tackle this big project here and the parts we got are from carparts.com i got this air conditioner compressor kit pretty simple to order just inputted my vehicle information searched for the compressor found the one i liked added to cart filled in my payment information clicked send boom got the parts pretty quickly so basically having an auto parts store in my mobile device makes purchasing parts pretty stinking easy so let's take a closer look at the parts we got all right, so in this box, we've got our accumulator dryer. This is a GPD part. Here's the part number, 4811598. So I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure what exactly that part is. I'll have to look into it, but that's part number 3411322. Looks like we got a new mesh screen for the expansion tube. There's part number there. And we've got a variety of seals and O-rings. And then here, the new compressor. Now this is the compressor for the extended version. I've got the third row seat. So that's the part number there, 6511418. This is a 2004 model. So I am not sure if this comes equipped with oil or not. I'll have to crack this open and see. If it doesn't come with oil, I prepared myself and bought some PAG 46 oil from the uh, store in town. So we'll have that to go in here if this does not come equipped. So we've got a threaded stud there for the fittings. All right. All right, so that's our parts. I think we're ready to go. So let's go wrenching boys. All right, before I crack open any kind of lines or anything, before anything gets going with this air conditioning, I need to make sure that my system is, a, is completely evacuated. Now, the air conditioning does not work on this currently, and we've got a leak, and the refrigerant has leaked out. But anyway, to test that, this is the Schrader valve where you would connect the uh, refrigerant to to charge the system. So I'll just stick the screwdriver in here and push that little valve in there, and... There's hardly any air coming out of that it's very little pressure. So we've got a complete leak and evacuation of our refrigerant. So we're good to go to go ahead and open up the lines and stuff whenever we go to replace this. If this thing was full, you know, you'd have to take this into an authorized shop that can uh, evacuate it and collect the refrigerant out. You can't just really dump that out into the nature. So I don't have to worry about that because it's already gone. So let's go ahead and get started with removing the compressor. So the compressor is located underneath the alternator on these inline six cylinders. So we've got the alternator to move out of the way and it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and disconnect and remove the battery and this battery tray to give myself some elbow room. You know, I got some big elbows. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this and the alternator so we can get at that compressor. Let's go wrenching. I'm just removing the anchor bolt and stuff that keeps the battery still. Just gotta remove the nut of that thing. Now we're gonna remove the tray itself. There are a few 13 millimeter bolts that hold this tray to the inner fender well. So we gotta remove those. And there's one down there. And it looks like there are spots for two more on this side, but they're not there. So whoever took this out before just created a shortcut because I ain't gonna lie, the horns are in the way and to get those bolts out would be difficult, to say the least. Got this wire loom that's attached to this thing with a couple of clips and pop those. Got all the bolts out, so they should just pop out. There are the two bolts there and one down there. And it looks like there's supposed to be two down there, but those are already gone. Save me a step. 
You can definitely tell how much that opens up the elbow room in here. So we're gonna take off the serpentine belt and we're gonna take these brackets off, get that alternator out of the pulley. Then we'll be able to get down to there to that AC compressor where there just ain't much room, folks. That's all there is to it. And I got my 3 h drive ratchet into the idler pulley got a big box end I'll slide that puppy on the end give myself some leverage and then we're going to go ahead and slide this belt off the, all this stuff i could probably just leave this alone and let it flop but i want it out of here yeah and then remove this 10 millimeter I got two 15 millimeter bolts and there's supposed to be a 15 millimeter right underneath this thing. We're supposed to get at it from a extension from this direction, but it's gone. It's not there. Somebody's removed this before and is making shortcuts for the next guy. That pops out with that little connector. Okay, alternator's ready to come out. We got two 15 millimeter bolts up top, and I believe there's one, possibly two, to remove on the bottom. I may have mentioned this a time or 12 in my videos. Ratcheting box end wrenches are awesome. I don't know how I lived without these for so long. This lower bolt's kind of tricky because you gotta fight the fan. This is kind of in the way when you're using a wrench. So if you really want to irritate your skin and scratch yourself to pieces, work around the fan blade with a ratcheting wrench. Get you every time. You gotta love having an audience. Look at that loaf. Hi Otis. You wanna help me with this air conditioning compressor? Yeah, I didn't think so. He's like, go away. Disconnect this pigtail. And then we got an eight millimeter nut to take off for the power supply. And then this thing comes out. That was the lower bolt crashing to the ground. No big deal. See, GM makes it really easy to get their parts off their vehicles. <laughs> now we got this idler pulley to remove now. I see a bolt there. I think there's one right behind there. Possibly one underneath there, but anyway, that's gotta come out. Those three bolts, pain in the rear. All right, taking a look at the compressor. I believe this is the noise right here. It's kind of crunchy sounding. And there is just a little bit of play in that bearing. So pretty sure that is the culprit as to why this thing whines so much. Anyway, there is the line fitting bolt. We need to get that off. This is the pressure sensor. We need to unplug that pigtail. And then we've got these two bolts here and then underneath it are the same kind of bolts. Let's go wrenching. I'm using some extensions. These are the wobble head extensions that I got from Hubble Freight. So the pressure sensor is right there. There's a pigtail that connects to it and I broke the tab off of it. So perfect. That's loose, so whenever we get these bolts out, we'll be able to pop those fittings, pull that compressor out. All right, here goes one of four bolts to remove. I 
Okay, so I'm underneath the car, and I think the best way to get these bottom bolts off of this air conditioning compressor is from down here. There's the electrical connection, so we'll get that disconnected while we're under here too. And these two are a booger. I should be able to get a wrench and a long extension, you know, work right here. I may have to use my box end wrench for this one. We're making it work. Then we got this electrical connection. Let's go lift up on that tab and pull. So we're done down here. Let's go top side. So it's ready to come out. Everything's been unhooked. Trouble is, I don't know how I'm gonna get this thing out with all this stuff in the way. I just love how everything just gets crammed in here. Anyway, I'm gonna wrestle this thing and try to get it out. Okay, to give myself a little better chance at success, I went ahead and undid this 10 millimeter nut on the end of this post right there for this AC line. Loosening this should help me move both these lines. I should be able to move these lines out of my way to get that compressor up and out of here with ease. I say ease, but nothing's ever easy. You know what I mean? There's one of the seals. That looks like I could probably pull that out of here. Wasn't that bad actually. I don't know if you can hear that or not. There's definitely some play in that bearing. You can hear it's kind of crunchy. So that bearing was shot, so in any event, let's take a look at the new one and compare it to the old one. Okay, looking at the new one, everything looks identical as far as the bolt holes, electrical connections. I'll give you a new stud put in here so I don't have to mess with that. Thank goodness I don't have to remove that. Okay, the backs are just a little bit different as far as the bolt placement, but that could just be the internals. The casing looks good. Okay, the wiring looks the same. All right, well, let's crack this thing open and see if it comes pre-filled with oil. If it doesn't, I've got some and we'll put it in there. Okay, it's got some oil in it, not a bunch. Okay, the oil I'm gonna be putting in this is this R134A PAG 46, according to the shop manual. So for the inline six cylinder, third row extended with rear AC, this compressor takes eight and a half ounces. And this is an eight ounce bottle. And I assume there's probably at least half an ounce left in that from not being able to get all the oil out of it. So we're gonna go ahead and put this container in there. I'm handling this about as gracefully as a one-year-old trying to pour himself a glass of OJ. <laughs> Just making an absolute mess out of this. And we'll never know if this thing's got a leak or not because all this UV oil. <laughs> Woo!
Goodness sakes, I have just made an absolute mess out of this whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this new compressor down in there. those lines moved out of the way I can actually reach the lower bolts from up top. Let's get them started by hand. You can see I got the compressor in place. I got the bolts started by hand. I'll go ahead and tighten those down and then I'll put in the fittings into the top of the compressor there. Plug in my electrical connection. Okay so I've got the seals put on the fittings here. I clean the surface real good and then and put a little bit of that oil from the new compressor on the seals a little bit to kind of lubricate them up a little bit. I've got the post put in the compressor. I'm ready to set this fitting in the compressor and then tighten it down with that nut. All right, so it is all installed. Everything's plugged in, tightened down. So it's just a matter of repeating the process and putting everything back together. I will have to replace this accumulator dryer, but as you can tell, it's way past my bedtime. I will pick this up at a later date, but I'm thankful to have the compressor installed. Everything went back together without too much of a hassle. I did drop one of the seals, so that was kind of a bummer, I'm trying to fish that thing out of the engine bay. But uh, otherwise, it went pretty smoothly. There's actually some room down there, more than you think, and I've got some pretty large hands, so for me to be able to say that, you know, it's not ideal, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to clean up for now. I'll get back at this at a later date. I'll check back with you then. In my haste to get this cleaned up for the night, I dropped one of these bolts down into the engine bay, and I looked for about 15 minutes, and I could not find it. Now, if you would have told me you could lose a bolt this big in the engine bay, I would have laughed at you. But the joke's on me because I can't find it. Do me a favor and keep an eye out in the rest of this video and see if you can spot it for me. All right, so here we are back again. Same crap, different day. We're going to be tackling the accumulator dryer. I left off with it being way past my bedtime, having installed the compressor. So we're going to do this this morning. I'm going to remove this air box so I can have some room. The snorkel's kind of in the way. These big hands you know i got to have some room so we're going to take care of that and we're going to start removing the old dryer to install a new one so let's go ranching to get this air box off there are three screws that hold the top lid so we'll remove those so i got this impact driver from harbor freight it's the uh, quarter inch impact driver got a battery for it and got this extension with whatever but uh, yeah, this was marked down like on clearance for like 25 bucks. And then this battery was an open battery on the shelf and it was 10 bucks off of like regular price. So, you know, 60 bucks and you got yourself a working tool. It's an impact. How could I not buy it? So anyway, pretty nice. So far I'm liking it. The guy that owned this before me didn't put the screw back down in there. So I only had to remove two. I went ahead and picked up these socket adapters that go into your impact. It was a package of three, quarter inch, three eighths and a half inch. All right, so that out of the way, I got more room. So yeah, anyway, you got about 60 bucks in the tool and the battery five bucks in the adapters and then another 20 bucks or something for the charger so so you're looking at about ninety dollars for this whole thing and so i mean it is what it is i mean i i know it's not a super heavy duty heavy hitter but with it being the impact driver, I can use this to drive in deck screws or 
whatever, plus use it on my car with these adapters. So I don't know, it just seemed like a really good price for a machine that can make my life a little bit easier. So why not? So to get this dryer out, I gotta remove this nut for this post, disconnect the low pressure switch, and then this line connects to the firewall. There's a post on it with a nut that I have to remove as well. moisture and dirt out of that. I'm just going to put fresh seals on it from the kit. I put a little bit of the oil on the seal. Do the same for the other one. Put the low pressure sensor on and this thing's ready to go in. Got that hex shape on it to be able to screw it on. Tighten it down. Just gonna tighten it snug so that the O-ring has a chance to kind of squish in there and seat. Thank the Lord, fellas, I found it. It was underneath the oil pan on the plastic cover that protects the oil, oil filter directly underneath the engine. Whew. Okay, so it's all in now. One thing I forgot uh, to get on camera was I put an ounce of this PAG 46 oil in here. Just put it in this orifice right there, just dropped it right in. An ounce, that's what the manual suggested, so that's all in, everything's tightened down. We're just gonna start reassembling, putting all the bracketry, alternator, all that stuff back in. Okay, I did happen to notice right here by the condenser, it looked like I had a leak. You can see there's some gunk and stuff collecting around there. I believe the seal is bad on this thing. So I'm gonna go into that seal kit that I got from carparts.com and replace the seal, clean up all this gunk. And uh, I think that may have been a source of a leak and then I'm going to switch over to this one and replace the seal as well because it looks like there might be a little bit of a leak going on right there. Might as well. Now it's time to reassemble everything and get this puppy button back up together so my wife can start driving it. What's gonna happen next is I'll get an appointment scheduled with the shop up in town. They do radiator and AC work. So we'll schedule and get this vehicle in their shop. They'll pull vacuum on here, check for any kind of leaks. Hopefully they won't find one, but if they do, then we'll have to address that one if we get there. So if there's no leaks, they'll go ahead and charge the system with some refrigerant and we'll get this AC working. So not only will my wife be happy that the AC is working, but also that whining noise that was from the bearing on that compressor should be gone too. So that's a win for me because I can't stand to hear that noise. And it's a win for her because she'll have her AC. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing all back together. We'll fire it up and see how it sounds.
right, we're all back together. Double checked all my nuts and bolts, make sure everything's tight. So we're ready to fire this thing up. Let's see what happens. Well, there you have it. That is the AC compressor replacement and accumulator dryer replacement on this 04 Failblazer. As you saw in the beginning of this video, this thing was whining worse than a kid in the toy department at Walmart. And it's finally quieted down with the brand new pulley and stuff from that new compressor. So glad to have that replaced. And it's kind of bad when the entire neighborhood knew when you were coming home because this thing was so loud. But now it's nice and quiet. So thank goodness for that. Now I'll be honest, replacing this really isn't all that bad if especially if you've had some experience removing parts and components off of a vehicle it is a delicate system you got to have good seals and stuff or else you're going to leak so getting the seals replaced and all that can be a little bit tricky and may seem a little bit daunting but uh, it really wasn't that bad so the next step for this rig is to take it to town and have the shop put their machine on it evacuate the system recharge it and we should be good to go well that's going to wrap up today's video again thank you to carparts.com for sponsoring it if you want to see more repairs on this truck, check out my channel. If you're so inclined, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. If you're interested in any of my Danonator merch, check out the store below. And as always, thanks for watching. God bless. Be sure and hit that like switch on your way out. We'll see you next time. Special thanks to carparts.com for sponsoring today's video. Guys, if you're searching for replacement parts for your vehicle, give carparts.com a look. Their mobile friendly site makes it super easy to search for and buy parts online anytime, anywhere, giving DIYers a parts store on demand.